Howdy, I'm Bob Terry. Thanks for joining us for another fantastic, classic Western film. From 1942, American Empire. Starring Richard Dix, Preston Foster, Leo Carrillo, and Francis Gifford, along with Big Boy Williams. Dan Taylor and Pax Bryce are running a freight business from the riverboat when they run into a man driving cattle to Louisiana. They agree to transport the cattle for a set fee, but the man fails to pay them, so they just decide to keep the cattle and go into the ranching business and start a ranching empire. This is a wonderful movie, and it has a wonderful climatic gunfight. Brought to you here free online by westernsontheweb.com. Sit back, relax, kick your boots up, and enjoy this wonderful classic entertainment. And we'll see you after the movie. steam when he gets in the cylinder. Can't even pack a bearing. I had to do it myself. What are you doing? Still juggling those figures? We're not juggling. Have a look. We'll make about 800 this time. Is that all for all the work we did? I'm going daffy carrying freight up and down this river. Dan, let's sell the Betsy Ann and get into something else. Well, 800 may not be much, but it's safe and sure. Uh, yeah. At least we had some excitement when we owned the old Hattie T. Was it your idea to swap her for this? Yeah, but the whole setup has changed. There was a war on A man could make some real money. But don't you remember? Oh, I remember all right. I remember getting a broadside of midships from the Union gunboat, taking splinters out of my uh, hide for two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> you got a hundred dollars for every splinter. That's right, and Confederate money. <laughs> War's over, Pax. We can't start another one just because you're restless. Me, I like the river. Always so peaceful and quiet. <laughs> Those is nice tender cows. You must feed them tender. The lazy one. Why those cows is not across the river, huh? Those ranchers, they catch us, they will hang us by the neck until we don't live some more. <laughs> we got no time to die now, eh? Ali, come on. Hey, Bobby. Ali, hey, please. A vast there ready. Let it be. Nobody cares what time it is out here, except maybe the sand, please. Well, I care, because it's regulation. And if you'd ever sailed before the mast, you'd know it. You see going that. I've sailed the baby straight. I picked whole whales from the north of Madagascar. Now sail away. I think I'll scuttle you. No, don't. Sail away is off its course. Now, you undersized jellyfish, repeat after me. I'll never speak no more foul slander against my friend. 
He and that Runny are up there fighting again. Hey, sail away. Runny! shooting. How about getting us off this sandbar? You got us on. Maybe we do business. I come aboard. I got an idea. He's got a funny notion about business. Now bring my bottom. 30 years of floating, I wind up high and dry on a Texas sand. You must have done your floating in the bathtub. Ha. I'll float you. Dominic Andre Ipulis Saint Anne, just your service. Oh, that's quite a collection of handles. <laughs> there is a customer in my Louisiana. And yours? I'm Paxton Bryce, Dan Taylor, my partner. What's your deal? Well, I am in quick hurry. You carry my cows and uh, I will pull it off your boat. <laughs> Somebody after you, huh? Looks like they're rustled. Ah, that is old fashioned. The wars here make enough cows for us all. What's a war got to do with it? Everything. The owners, they go away to fight, they stay four years, and these cattle travel all over Texas by himself and make plenty of little ones. <laughs> these are what we call in French, uh, libre comme l'air, like English, uh, free like the air. <laughs> they belong to no one, they got no brand. And uh, finders is keepers, huh? Well, I sort them out. Oh, I have a soft heart. I ask myself, uh, Dominique, these poor cattle, they don't got no home, so I gather them together and I take them to live on my home. That's very kind of you. Why are you in such a hurry? Well, these ranchers, they want to keep all the wild cattle, so they chase me. Uh, upon this sense, I am telling you the truth. Well, that's good enough for me. What do you say, Dan? I guess it's all right. The Betsy Ann gets paid for what she carries. Oh, I am honest man. I wish to go to Mirio Landing on the Louisiana side. How many cows you got? About 1,000. Cost you a dollar a head. Eh bien, I will get my men started, eh? Tie your rope to the back of the boat. A bit, a lot. They're in cattle. It's plum to grading, Ronnie. Could have been goat. Hey, Dominic. I'd like to hear some more about those poor orphan cows. <laughs> Get below, Jim. We may need a full head of steam. Yeah. We better get our money quick. Well, how about our money? Fair. Oh. Hi, babe. Later, when I get the money for the cows. Okay, now you don't take them off. Oh, Shard. Oh, Bouchard. So you know me, huh? That is of no consequence. Boy, turn the cargo for it. I say I pay later. Pierre, get those cars off quick. And keep your eyes on those Americans. Lily, Henry, get the cattle off the boat, quick. Both feet ahead. Both feet ahead.
cause just about paid for our trouble. And we never give credit. Eh bien, monsieur, I still owe you something, but I always pay. <laughs> Like we're in the cattle business. The sooner he'd handed us the money, though. He handed us an idea that's worth millions. We're way ahead. This whole end of Texas is full of cattle that don't belong to anybody. Natural increase during the war. We buy the land, all the cattle on it are ours. Sounds like a great idea. It's too much of a gamble. Gamble? So it was running a blockade, but we made money, didn't we? Can't you see it, Dan? This beats any deal we've ever been in. We can take the money we've got, sell these cattle, and to Betsy Ann. We could buy land by the square mile. Round up cattle by the thousands. Sell them and buy more land. We'll have a ranch like nobody's ever seen before. It would be like going in your own country, wouldn't it? Be bigger than that. It would be like, a, like an empire. Your own American empire. Well, you're flying high, but I'll flap along with you. We get the river before we'll go have a talk with the land agent. Then I uh, think we ought to drink a couple of toasts to a mighty bright future, don't you? Nantucket sleigh ride. I'll put the law on you. Oh, where's my customer? My customer! What a place to roost. You're the prettiest prize I ever got in a grab bag. Is there any more in there like you? Isn't one victim enough? Or do you generally run them down with a dozen? Let go of my hat. <laughs> you ain't hurt, Mama. I'll live. <laughs> hey, you so bust the steam, Skipper. Not a one, not a one. Get out. Get out of here. This ain't no corral. <laughs> And you, mister, it will cost you a lot of money for this damage. All right, it'll cost me a lot of money. There you are. Take that and keep the chain. All right, boys, show's all over. I'll see you down at the music hall. Hey, you got a wonderful store here. Go ahead, trample my luggage, too. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. Honest, I am. I mean, about the whole thing. You ought to be sorry. A grown man playing horseback on a cow. I ought to call the police. You'll have to call awful loud, because we're not blessed with them out here. That's too bad. You belong in jail. <laughs> you see, you're tacking way off your course, because he's the finest little skipper that ever tried the deck. Thank you, Ronnie. My compliments, ma'am. To cool you off. Little lady. My compliments to hold in your temper. And may I compliment all of you. I've never seen finer specimens of drunken hoodlums. She upset or something? <laughs> now I've shivered and froze over half the Arctic Circle, hunting these here whale bones so women can hold up their reputations. What thanks do I get? <laughs> Reminds me of a Hattie T. Got the lines of a clipper and the disposition of a balky barge. I sure hope we don't sight her again. Oh, <laughs> let's go back where we came from. Hey, Dan. Yo, Dan! What the Sam Hill? Where are you? What, what happened? I thought you were going to meet me after you got tied up. Well, something happened that kept me on board. Oh, did you miss the time? Yeah, sure. I guess you did the honors for both of us, huh? Better sleep at all. Oh, I don't want to go to bed. We're going back to the music hall. 
Hey, what? will you see the redhead I got? Oh, well, we'll make it some other night. What's the matter with you? Didn't he, didn't you hear me? I said a redhead. She's even prettier than the one you sent the violence to in Galveston. I didn't have a girl in Galveston. Must have been still away. Still away, my eye. It was you. She threw the lamp at. This was she. Was... What else did the redhead do? What's she doing here? You know we don't allow women on board. She's no woman. This is my kid sister, Abigail. Abby? This is Paxton Grice. She arrived this afternoon, had a kind of an accident with a no-account drunk. <laughs> well, what's so funny? <laughs> it was the accident. Well, she said that it was a low-down, no-good rowdy. I should have recognized you, Pax. <laughs> well, I furnished so much amusement. How does she have that cruise in? Did you send for her? Well, not exactly. That is, I might have mentioned in one of my letters that we had a lot of room on board. Oh, yeah, sure, sure, sure. And you also told her we're going to make a stop at Riverford. Holy smoke, Dan. We haven't got time to be a couple of nursemaids. Now, listen, Pepper Pot, I did send for her. We probably heard her feelings. That's too bad, but she can't stay. Yeah. Poor kid, she's probably crying her eyes out. Fine reception we gave her. This country's no place for her. It's going to have to be. My aunt, who she's been living with, died. Well, naturally, she feels that her place is with me now. I'm very sorry, but our plans don't include kid sisters. She's going back east. Give her any excuse you like, but you got to get rid of her. Nothing doing. Now, it's up to me to look after her, and she stays. Look, Dan, you know how bossy women are. Before you know it, she'll be telling us why the douche have the whole place upside down. Well, if that's all it's worrying you, forget it. You won't even know that she's around, and I, I promise you. All right, see that I don't. I'll have to stand for some of these changes around here, but the Hattie T stays right there. Sorry, I was just going to put up something I like better. Well, maybe your brother doesn't mind if you make a parlor out of this cabin, but I'd appreciate it if you let my things alone. And where are the old curtains? I like them. Those are the old curtains. I just washed them. Would you mind telling me where my pipes are? Here they are. I washed them for you. You what? Don't get so excited. It's only soap and water. Only soap and water? Oh, my... <laughs> With my shaving brush. <laughs> even going to know she was on board. In the last two weeks, she's overhauled everything with the engine. Oh, simmer down, Pax. Personally, I like the way she's fixing things. And don't forget the good meals she's been cooking. Yeah, all the comforts are home. If I had enough, I'm going to show and look at that acreage. Hey, the land agent said it might make a good start for the ranch. Well, I'll go with you. I better get a couple of cans of beans. Why? Abby's cooked a nice rabbit stew. And... <laughs> hey, Satterway, heave two in time to the West Bank. <laughs> Stay away, you and Ronnie stay behind and give Miss Abby a hand. This tub has turned into a cruddy old hen house. Bless me for one ideal. I ain't no cabin boy, Mr. Taylor. Of course you aren't, Stay And all hands will rest till we take a look at Mr. Bryce's property. It isn't every day that you can catch a glimpse of an empire, is it? No, ma'am. Are we ready? There's the boundary marker. And way up in those rolling hills is another marker. And everything in between is, is the... the Bryce Empire? <laughs> is that the cattle that go with them? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Ronnie, man your station. We'll put the little critter in dry dock. I'll take the bow. You take the stern. to consider, Pax. We don't know anything about the cattle business. Well, we can learn, can't we? Look at that. When I see that, there's only one thing I can think of. How much land can I get and how many cows go with it? You're letting your imagination run away with you as usual. 
it wasn't for my imagination, we wouldn't have a nickel. Why, we wouldn't have run cotton and we wouldn't well, have been... this time you're wrong. I think, damn it. I know you had to come along. Please don't bother thinking. I was just going to agree with you, Mr. Bryant. Oh. Oh. You were? Well, that's a little different. Then neither are using any common sense. Who's going to buy beef from us in these parts when they can get it from nothing? They won't here, but they will up north and back east, where they're paying $10 a head in Abilene. And that fellow Chisholm proved that cattle can make the trip. Yeah, that's the point. So why throw away money buying land when you can round up all the cattle you want? Well, I won't always be like that. Someday all this land will be privately owned. Of course it will, Dan. The country's growing this way, and before long there'll be a new way of living. Law and, and order and property rights. There'll be no place for wild cattle hunters. You'll have to have your own range, and a lot of it. Well, Dan, we're uh, two to one against it. <laughs> so you two are pulling together for a change. Well, I know when I'm late. We'll sell the Betsy Ann to that fellow in Riverford. Javi, I uh, guess I was a little bit wrong about you. It's uh, getting to be a pleasure having you around here. The first nice thing you said to me. Better be careful. It might get to be a habit. You couldn't be. A habit is uh, something you're not conscious of. Like that awful frown when you're mad? Well, that's uh, self-defense. Begging your pardon, Skipper. What are we going to do now? You can swap that harpoon for a branding iron. We're going to work. A harpoon on dry land? Why, that's prom loony. I'm going to get me a buffalo for a pen cushion. I'll cleave him clean into it a hundred yards. Sail away, you're going to make a valuable man on a cattle ranch. The way you can throw the bull. so it won't get wrinkled. Uh, how about a little song, huh, Randy? Yeah, yeah. Come on, a little song. Come on, little song. Come on, Come on boy. boy. You better stop that gal and she's got him earmarked. Earmarked? <laughs> that last has got him roped and hog tied. She sure <laughs> has. <laughs> oh, Pax, of 
the loveliest present of all. Oh. So we're just beginning, Abby. There isn't anything the future won't give you. All I want and need is right here with me now. Oh, Pax, we'll build something fine together. Something we can be proud of. We can be married before I go to Abilene. Oh, and this will make such a lovely way. Certainly. What do you think I got it for? Pretty sure of me, weren't you? I never heard of such conceit. Well, I... It's just a question of you. I could say no. But I don't see how I can resist the dress. <laughs> Give me some time to blow the man down. Oh, it's sailors and tinkers and tailors is men. Hey, hey, blow the man down. And I would known I would have arrived sooner for our celebration. What do you want? Payment for your cattle? Oh, no, monsieur, but you have plenty of cattle now, eh? Yes, plenty. But they're all ours. Oui, oui, ours, eh? Not yours, ours. <laughs> the old score is all settled. Oh, absolutely. Dominic Bouchard always start clean with his new partners, eh? <laughs> <laughs> well, what do you laugh? You use my ideas to go into business? Eh bien? My ideas, your money? Yeah, we are partners, no? No. You have no claim, not even for a single hoof or horn. Yeah, but I have a different view. Listen, Beauchard, if we catch you or anybody else taking any of our cattle, we'll give you a dose of stomach pills you can't digest. <laughs> we understand each other? <laughs> I know how you feel, but I, too, have ideas like yours. I would like a big ranch in my Louisiana where I can be a big man of much power. That's your affair. But when you're on this side of the river, you keep your eyes peeled for our boundary markers. Who? I have seen them, but uh, I don't believe little words on paper. <laughs> Bonsoir, monsieur. Monsieur. Madame. Au revoir. Au revoir. He wasn't bluffing. We can take care of him, all right. Did you offer to drive to Abilene? Not by a jug for We need all the money those cattle will bring. You'll have enough men to take care of Beauchard. I'd relish doing it for a fact. Come on, Ronnie, let's finish the song. Yeah, come oh, on. Oh, sailors is tinkers and sailors is men. Oh, 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 the men. You Nothing might. will. Not when I have you waiting for me. I'll be back by Thanksgiving. Special. 
Well, there she be. And not a scratch on her hull. You like it, honey? Like it? Oh, it's fit for a king. That's what he'll be someday. Oh, Abby, he's going to make our future complete. Something to build for. What's the matter? Lately, I haven't been so sure of our future. I've been worried, Pax. Well, you get those notions right out of your head. We'll have the best doctor that... It isn't that. It's Dan on the ranch. Bosch, I've been raiding. It's ever since you left. Why didn't you tell me your letters? I'd have come right back. Dan thought he could catch him, but he's managed to slip away every time. I guess I didn't take that hombre seriously enough. Where's Dan now? He's gone to Blue Rock Canyon. He put some cattle there to draw Beauchard. Oh, Pax, I'm afraid. Dan may be walking into a trap himself. Beauchard seems to know... If you don't stop that fretting, you won't have any appetite for that turkey dinner. I'll go get Dan a hand. Start moving the herd. Oh, Augustine, you are a wise old fox to find so many cows in one place. Eh? For that, I am going to promise you 100 gold pieces. Eh? Let me see, let me say. Hello. Please, please, please. So many cows with the glasses of poor. I smell a mice behind the wood pile someplace. This place is no good. Now we must go. Hello. Hello. I finally got Bouchard. He wound up in the river. Well, that's the best day's work he ever did. I don't want any trouble for the next few months on account of Abby. That's right. How'd things go in Abilene? Got top prices. Good. Give me something. I will not forget too soon. Eh? Are we? Take it easy, Pax. Abby will be all right. Hey, that squeal's pretty high. It must be a girl. It's got to be a boy. I made him a harpoon. Is she all right, Willie May? Fine. So is your son. Come 
the guys are on me. Up south, boys. Oh, thanks. How does it feel to be Pop? I don't know. Uncle Dan? That's right. <laughs> Lucky it wasn't a girl, Skipper. We'd have had a tough time raising her. Oh, what do you know about raising kids? Everything. I was the last in a 14-kid family, and I never did get enough to eat. The good thing you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you some of the troubles I had when I was a kid. And that, my mates, is how come I had the measles 14 times. How many times? 14. Go on in, Pax, and meet your new boss. Elbow stiff. Put your weight on your right foot and bend your knee. Off you blow. No, oh, no, Pax. Get some heft into it. Bet you I can rope it. Uh, what kind of sailing hulk is that? Oh, gee, sailor, why? I don't want to be a whaler. I'm a cowboy. Listen here, young fella. Whaling's a noble profession, and you're going to be the greatest Not whaler. I have anything to say. Morning, Pop. I got up extra early for our ride, but you're gone, though. I went into town to get something for you. My pony? Where is it? Ronnie's got him. Oh! Stay out of the way. I don't like to be at you all the time, but you've got to stop spouting that kind of talk to Pax. Well, bless my barnacles, Mr. Bryce. I hate to see the lad grow into a landlubber. He's not going to be a footloose windjammer. He's going to grow up to be a solid, dependable man that the whole country can look up to. Aye, aye, sir. I still say he ain't cut out for no cowpoke. What you ordered, son? Oh, you're the best pop in the world. And you're the best mom. <laughs> well, up we go. How yeah. the stairs? It's just dry. <laughs> You'll be out riding me in no time. Hatch is awful smart, Pop. Chandler's easier than a sloop and a fair breeze. I wish you wouldn't pay quite as much attention to the sail away as yarn, son. Oh, I listen to my like him. Can I go on the next round up? No, oh, that might be a good idea. It's about time you learned how a ranch is run. You just keep your eyes open and watch everything I do, because someday you're going to be the boss. Am I? If I watch you, will I be a real cattleman? Thanks. Raising cattle's a mighty big job. It's probably the biggest job in the United States. You know, once Abraham Lincoln said, we must get beef to all the country, both north and south. He was talking to cattlemen like you and me. He left us with that responsibility, so we'll have to live up to it. Golly, if we're going to feed everybody, we'll have to round up a lot of steers. Lucky I got my new lariat. I rode calves and helped ride herd. <laughs> well, you can always use a good hand, son. Now, I guess we better get home. Want to race? All right, come on. 
At the end of the trail, little pal, when the sun disappears in the well. At the end of the trail, little pal, we will have real contentment and rest. If we should be parted by some trick of fate, wait at the old corral. You Why don't y'all go to work? May depend that you find me, old friend, at the end of the trail, little town. These figures are impossible. 3,000 head less than last year. Every year your tallies have been off more each time. Well, I can vouch for the figures. We combed every inch of the range. Yeah, I thought at first it was drought, freezing, normal straying, when you consider the size of the herds we're handling. 3,000 head is too much of a leak. I don't like the look of it myself. Pop, will you fix my lariat? Not now, Pax. I'm busy. There's only one answer for it. Other ranchers are driving our cattle to market alongside of their own and burning out our brands. There's a sure way to stop it. Close the range to everybody. That'll cause a peck of trouble, Mr. Bryce. Folks have always driven across each other's land. They're not going across mine anymore. Post no trespassing signs. And patrol the range to make sure everybody understands we mean it. Don't you think we better wait till Mr. Taylor gets back from Galveston? I gave you your orders, Ford. Are Mr. Crowder and his friends stealing our cattle? Somebody is, and we're going to put a stop to it. Ah, Pierre, the journey was good, eh? Oh, good 1,000 times. Such fat cows. <laughs> I should thank Monsieur Bryce and Taylor for raising them for me, eh? Ah. <laughs> also, the saints that they don't find out if it's you who take them all these years? Yeah, but you forget I am a ghost. Was I not drowned? Eh? Oh. <laughs> uh, something happened while you was away. Uh, oui? Oui. I buy the Lemire plantation, eh? Uh, Saint Croix. You buy? Oui, me. Oui. Well, soon you will be the most rich man in Louisiana. Yeah. Well, the most rich and the most powerful, eh? Well, can I help it if my good partners are so careless with their cows? Hmm? Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> Howdy, Mr. Taylor. Hi, Mr. Taylor. Hi, Mr. Taylor. Hi, Mr. Taylor. Hi, Mr. Glad to see you home again. Thank you. Why all the artillery? No outside herds allowed on the range. Mr. Bryce has ordered. Some of the outfits are kind of hot, but so far they're just calling names. There you are. Now we'll run free without grabbing. Thanks, Pop. Max, what are you thinking of? Closing the ranch to outside cattle. Well, you know all Texas is open range. Well, it's about time it wasn't. A man can't raise a decent herd with every scrub bull mixing with his stock. Puts out feed, not a man's cattle eats it. You can't even run steers on your own land. Somebody grabs them. Just the same, you can't go around stepping on folks. Well, let them keep out of my way. Perhaps you don't have to push people against the wall. Well, if you make those ranchers drive the long way to market, there won't be any meat left on their cattle to sell. You'll force them out of business. This country was made for men that can stand on their own feet. If you want to survive, you have to fight. You can't be a sentimentalist. And you can't play lord and master. You forget it took the little man as well as the big one to make this country what it is. I can do without your lecture. You've gotten so puffed up with your own importance. Dan, please don't quarrel. I won't have it. Have it your own way. But remember, you can only push him so far. Pax, what's happened to you? You've changed so. You're hard and greedy. Hard and greedy? Because I'm fighting to keep what I have for my family? Well, I'll see them and... Pop! Why is Uncle Dan so mad? Is it because you're turning people off our place? Mm-hmm. We can't let them keep on stealing our cattle when we have none left. So we have to keep not, don't we? You bet you, Pop. And when I grow up, I'll help you fight him. Sure. Hush, Pax, you mustn't talk like that. What do you want him to be, a molly coddle? Ready to fight for what's his? I want him to know there are two ways of putting out a hand. And a shake or a slap. You get back a hand accordingly.
Howdy. I'd like to see Bryce, a tailor. Pax, it is a mighty good notion getting this breed. Certainly built to pack a lot of beef. Look, Dad. She's got a pillow on her neck. That's a brave of bull, Pax. We'll cross in with our longhorns, and that'll give us a higher percentage of beef. Bryce and Taylor are sure getting highfalutin building a castle like this. I wouldn't mind being in their boots. Well, you could be if you pushed folks off the land the way they have. You tried to buy me out, but I sent them packing. I told Bryce he wasn't trampling on me. Crowder's got a lot of nerve coming here after running you two hand. I wonder what he wants. I don't know. Howdy, boys. Hello, Crowder. Hello. Uh, we came to, uh... Well, a Bremer. Aren't Texas Longhorns good enough for your outfit? We decided that improving our stock might encourage our neighbors to do likewise. Leading ranchers should set an example, or else how is the cattle industry in Texas going to grow? It was growing before you were born, and it'll be growing after you're gone. Well, I'll shove it along while I'm here. My son will carry on where I leave off. I'm learning now, Mr. Crowder. I'm going to be Pop's right-hand man. Well, how about getting down to business? This Mr. McCabe, he represents the Great Southwest Railroad Company. How do you do, sir? Mr. Bryce and Mr. Taylor. Bryce? Oh, yeah. How do you do? Mr. McCabe has a deal for you. Concerns every man here. Well, gentlemen, we might as well be comfortable. Sit down, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Mm. Go ahead, Mr. McCabe. Well, gentlemen, our company proposes to build a line from Abilene to Riverford, and we're obtaining rights of way. So far, everyone along the route has given us permission, but we must have yours to complete the final link. Sorry, Mr. McCabe, but for my part, no railroad is going through our property. Well, you can't think of yourself all the time, Bryce. This will benefit the whole community. Make Riverford a great cattle center. Maybe, and it'll also bring in a tidal wave of settlers. Before you know it, they'll be demanding roads, town sites. They'll cut up the land and the farms. We cattlemen will be crowded out. Hold on, Pax. Maybe we can get on without a railroad. But I claim some of the smaller outfits are entitled to make a decent profit, too. And they can by freighting their cattle to Abilene instead of driving them. Yeah, You're right. The tailor's right. right. Yeah. You know the cattle industry needs range. Enormous range. And a railroad will kill it. I say it stays out. You got your sights leveled on the wrong target, Pax. I guess there's nothing I can say that'll switch them. Mr. Bryce, don't you realize you're stopping development in this territory? McCabe, it's taken years to put this ranch together. Years of sweat, struggle, and fight. I'm not letting your railroad tear it down. I'm sorry we can't get together. So am I. Goodbye. Hi. Mr. Crowder? Looks like our deal's off. None of the land's any good to us without theirs. Well, they're riding high now, but they won't ride on forever. When I was a walking down Paradise Street. Hey, hey, blow the man down. A pretty young damsel that I chanced to meet. Uh, give me some time to blow the man down. Where did you get my pet fan? I borrowed it to chew the flies off the patch. She wrote a tale for that purpose. Not on her front, then. <laughs> you don't mind, do you, Mom? If anything should happen to it, I'll buy you another one. You could never replace it, darling. First present your father ever gave me. Oh, I'll be careful. I'll put it away as soon as we get home. A rabbit! Let's chase it! Bryce can drive off some of the smaller outfits, but he can't stop this drive. Not if we all stick together. Still and all, we'll be a trespassing. Well, how are we going to get a cows to market? Why, it'll take a week to circle their range. If we don't shortcut, we have to cross the river and go down through the bayous. We can't drive stairs through mud that has no bottom. There's a gladdening party to cut across dry creek. Bryce Taylor outfit shot 40 of his steers. Increased him in the shoulder. Well, they're clamping down on us, just like they planned all along. They won't be satisfied until they starve every one of us out. No sidewinder's gonna keep me from making a living. Me neither. Just let them try to stop us. <laughs> Sergeant, 
Sorry, Mr. Crowder, but you can't cut across Bryce Taylor range anymore. Well, we've been doing it right along, and we don't aim to change now. Mr. Bryce says different. Ford, you keep out of the way. We're coming through. Crowder, turn those cows. We don't want trouble. Son, you've got it. All right, bring it in. Responsible. You are. You pinned them in a corner, drove them into going against you. They didn't have to kill my son. I'll keep him off this place. I'll fence the whole ranch. I'll put a bullet in the first one that sets foot on it. And you'll do it alone. When we started this ranch, we wanted to make it something we'd be proud of. But you've turned it into a thing that reeks of greed and depression. A thing that all decent people hold against. It's already cost the life of an innocent child. What's happened is only the beginning. There'll be more killings, more bloodshed. And for what? So you can have a few more miles of range, a few more cows? I can't stomach your notions any longer. You've gone soft. Well, I won't stop until... Pack, you've done enough. Stay out of this, Abby. Now, I've had my crop full. I'm putting an end to this partnership. Good, I'll buy your interest. That suits me. Pack, listen, hate and revenge will destroy you. It won't bring our son back. What kind of a mother are you? You want me to turn my other cheek? Well, I won't. That's not my way. Your way is to rule and trample over people. Grab for yourself at every turn. You taught it to pack. Your very words, honey. To... It's easy enough to blame me. But if I had it all to do over again, I'd still teach him to fight for what's his. Pax, you're blind and you'll stay blind. There's no place in your heart for love and understanding. I can't go on like that. That's up to you. I miss your spout, you big walrus. But Miss Abby will need me. Right. Goodbye. 
goodbye, Stanley. You've been awfully kind to me. Thanks, ma'am. Things won't seem ship shape around here without you. Bye. Set on leaving. I'm sorry, Pat. Terribly sorry. We had something fine and beautiful. It wasn't enough for you. Ready, Abby? I'll have the money for you as soon as possible. Whenever is convenient. You'll be in Riverford. Mr. Saylor, we told me to give you this. So he ran out on me, too. I ain't running out on you, Mr. Price. Yes, sir, you betcha. I tore right into them pirates. I cracked them on their skulls so hard, I busted all their toes. Bravo, bravo, boy, me. Honor to meet you. Two honors to meet you. Sure. Why don't you stay here, Luciana, and come to work with me at the Rancho Ope de la... No, I'm going back to the sea. I hate ranches. They change people. Makes them forget to be human. But my boss is almost human. He pays well. He got so many cows. You can hardly see the grass. <laughs> we find them in Texas by the quantities. I don't care where you found them. From now on, cows is only stakes to me. All right, have it your way. But honor me by meeting my boss. He like to meet men with courage like you. All right, we'll buy him a drink. Huh? All right, and we'll drink it, and we don't care. Sure. <laughs> oh, you are very funny. Hey, what's the matter? Are you sick? My liver. Is that your boss? We oui, monsieur. Come and meet him, will you? Come and meet, meet him. later. Come on, meet him. My liver's turning the oh, turtle. Come on. Don't disappoint a friend. I like it. He's gone. Is that right? One, four, seven, three, four. Fourteen thousand seven hundred and thirty-four. Check. Mm-hmm. As near as I can figure, Dan's share comes close to a half million dollars. If we raise that much cash, that'll leave us with a mighty small herd. Hi, Skipper! What are you doing here? You're supposed to be halfway to the Gulf. I was, but I ain't. I don't want no shore leave when there's some fighting to do. You're drunk. But just the same my eyes and ears ain't. I found out where your cow's been going to. Yeah? Where? Mr. Beauchard, Shanghai them. Beauchard? Now I know you're drunk. Sure. But just the same, I saw him just as plain as Hatter's light in a tavern across the river. Where you been all this time? You and I'll tie your tongue to your tail. <laughs> Sweetheart, huh? Bon nuit, mes amis. 
Not my old friend. Why you didn't let me know you was coming? I stay home to welcome you. I didn't want to put you to any trouble. Besides, this isn't a social call, Boshine. In the last seven years, you've stolen 10,000 of my cattle. A normal increase would have raised that to about 50,000. That makes you owe me plenty of hard cash. But I would take my share of our partnership. And I keep it. I have men both loyal and brave, and they will not let you take my cows from my ranch. There's more than one way of collecting a debt. <laughs> if you kill me, my men will shoot you before you can go a mile. Oh, what you gain, eh? <laughs> yes, you're right. I hadn't <laughs> thought about that. <laughs> but what can you do about this? <laughs> Dominic Bouchard, you've been found guilty of the charge of cattle stealing. The sentence of this court is that you be confined for the term of from two to five years. That's just a vacation. Well, if I was skipper in this here show, I'd stake him out on a yard on. Shh. Mr. Bryce, I understand you have filed suit in the Louisiana courts for the value of your stolen cattle. In view of this verdict, you should get your money quickly. It's bad to lose the money, but it's better to save the neck. You're lucky they only tried you for stealing cattle. You've no cause to grin. Stand up. I'm not through with you yet. There's another matter. Bouchard, you've been a thorn in the side of law and order in Texas for over 10 years. But the law always catches up with killers like you. For your raid on Clarksville, where you were responsible for the death of four persons, and on Melford, which you burned to the ground at a cost of more lives, for your attack on half a dozen ranches, the order of this court is that you be remanded to the custody of the sheriff to stand trial for murder. Court dismissed. Thanks for everything, Beauchard. It is too soon for thanks, monsieur. I promise you. Yeah, huh? <laughs> You're very foxy. Yeah, foxy, yeah, but look, I am in here. <laughs> That's a good one. That sure is a good one. What do you want? I have fresh clothes for Monsieur Bouchard. All right, come in. Let's have a look at them. Oh, oui. Oh, they are just uh, handkerchiefs, uh, socks, and the robe. <laughs> that will keep him warm. Oh, the cord. Oh, well, uh, to tie around the middle to keep out the cold air, huh? <laughs> All right, let him have him. Merci, monsieur. Oh, oh, oh. Uh. This time I am a fox, eh? Bonsoir, monsieur. Hey, but why you are keeping me waiting so many days? The police come to the ranch. We have to hide in the hills. And they have taken all the gold and put in the bank at the Riviera Ford. Oh, that is most convenient. <laughs> well, we'll be rolling east about ten minutes. I suppose we'll ever get used to living there again, after all this. Oh, sure, we will, and it'll be better. Barb Wire, consigned to the Bryce Taylor Ranch. Confound Pax's hide, he's just begging for trouble. Oh, Danny's so wrong. And the terrible part is, he believes he's right. Now, will you agree that we've got to clip Bryce's wings? That's the cruelest contraption ever invented. And he's using it to fence his whole range. He started coming in last night, and they've carted most of it away. They called it Bob Wire. Look at them barbed wire. It'll tear the cattle to pieces. We've got to drive him out of the country before he puts up a foot on him. Well, he's like Jimson weed. He's choking us to death. I'm for making a necktie so Now you're talking. We'll all meet tonight at Mesquite Flats. Pass the word to the rest of the men. 
and get to every man in Riverford. Let's go. Let's get out of here. We'll have to warn him. They'll kill him. I thought I'd stop loving him. But I haven't. When it comes to Pax, changing our minds is a tailor habit. I'll ride out. You and Ruddy stay here at the hotel while this thing blows over. And they won't rest until you're swinging from a limb, Pax. Now, come on, give up the idea of using Bob wire. I'll run this ranch as I see fit. The mob is going to dictate to me when I'm in the right. You're no more in the right than you were when you accused them of rustling. Now, I'll admit it and pull in your horns. Dan, my son died keeping him off this place. And as long as I live, they're going to stay off. If I have to turn Texas upside down, they'll pull this house apart brick by brick and... What do you care? It's not your property. You got your check. Now, go on before they show up. All right. I'll go. For 15 years, I've been sticking my neck out beside yours. Now I'm through. Ronnie, where have you been? Dan hasn't come back yet, and I'm worried. I'm going to the ranch. You can bet I'll get you out of here. Riverford ain't going to be healthy. Why, what's happened? Well, nothing yet. I was down by the river and heard two Frenchy boatmen yammering. Bouchard and his pack of scuttlers are coming in from La Cumbre, and they're going to sack the town. There's nobody here to stop them. Crowder and his men. I know all about it, Cal. Ruddy and I will try to stop them at the flat. We'll get all the women and children together and put them in the schoolhouse. Well, it looks like every man in town turned out. All right, men. On the horses. <laughs> Next to six shooter for me. I was hoping you'd come back. Fight wouldn't seem natural without the two of us, isn't it? Well, that's the way I figured. They may have left the flats by now. You go on after them, and I'll shortcut to the ranch and get help. Aye, aye, Skipper. <laughs> Only the old ones stay there. Well, certainly. Those ranchers, they make Monsieur Price pay for his sins. And while they do, Dominic Bouchard will collect. <laughs> Hello, Monte. We march. Remember, the ranches in the valley belong to you. And I give you the town also. But not the bank. That belong to me. I thought I told you to stay in town until this thing blows over. Oh, she's that like Cumbers. He's got hundreds of men. He's going to attack Riverford. Well, let him attack. But Pax will wipe out the entire valley. Those women and children... Let the men take care of them instead of using their mob rule on me. Well, Ronnie's gone after them, but I'm afraid he won't reach them in time. We can't let those women and children suffer, Pax. Your fight's not with them. She's right, Pax. Why should I worry about their families? They didn't worry about mine. Even so, we've come to help them. And while we ride to the rescue, that pack of wolves tears my ranch apart. Oh, no. Tax Jr. paid a big price for this place. And I'm not letting it go for a noble gesture. It won't make it easier on you to bring agony on others. In spite of what those men have done, they love their families as much as we love Tax. Would you want them to go through it with No. I wouldn't. with Willie May. He'll be safe for there. Well, Dan, I guess this is the end of our empire. Sure. But I've got a notion you're starting to build something better. 
Zeroing. Boy, all you men, get your horses. Bouchard's got us outnumbered, but from where he is, we'll have to go through battle next pass. We're a lot closer to it than he is. I've got a hunch we can even up the odds. You all ready, men? Yeah! Come on, keep working! Solid, man. If that fire trap doesn't hold them, this barricade shut. Push brush over. Hey! 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 Well, this rabbit is just one of Bryce's men. It's a trick to stall us. It is not a trick. I tell you, Bouchard is heading you for the... You go back and tell your boss we're not giving him time to get set for us. Oh, oh listen, fellas! Hey, Crowder, wait! Hey! Have the men lay low and wait for the signal. All right, men. Get down. Everything, then they start coming back out. Come on, Ford. Start plugging that gap. Light up, man. It's not good to play with fire. We go back. We take another way to town. Hold up! Hold fast! Hold!
barking? Sound like it's coming from the bottleneck. Well, maybe Bryce sent some of his men to draw us off. That firing's too heavy. Bryce hasn't got that big man. I'm taking a look. Hey, we better all take a look, huh? Come on. Hey!
getting sunk, but he's sure due for dry dock. Bryce, from now on, you can string as much of that barbed wire as you want, and I'm going to help you. You fellas saved our family, and we won't forget it. I guess we've both been wrong, Crowder. I can't stop the railroads any more than you can stop fenced in ranges. They're both here to stay because you both mean progress. Texas is. Dan, you better finish. Well, Pax means if we all pull together, we can make this the finest state in the Union, the cattle center of the country. So we're letting the railroad through. When we put up our fences, we're going to leave plenty of gates for our neighbors. Give me them pills, you big bunch of barnacle. You ain't giving these to the skipper, you little sand crab. Let go or I'll flatten you like a flounder. But the catalog says they're good for man or beast. Yeah, sure. I swallowed one this morning, my teeth still rattling. I'm dare give it to me. No. Give me a... Here's the bottle. Eat one pill that'll make you tie a knot in an octopus. <laughs> Eat them yourself. Here's all the medicine I'll ever need. Oh. Thanks for joining us for this classic Western film, this wonderful movie. We appreciate you being here, we appreciate you watching our films, and we hope you'll come on by westernsontheweb.com. Over 2,000 Western films to watch free, and they're brought to you by westernsontheweb.com. I'm Bob Terry, have a great-tastic day, and we hope to see you again on Down the Trail. <laughs>